All right, this is a sped up training. If you want to watch the full uncut training, you can do so in the description. I left a link. But for this, this is more for advanced users that just want to see a quick process and take a few notes as they go. If you want to see every step and for me to call out all of the keystrokes, then go ahead and watch the full version in the description that's over on my site, which will really support me. So we're starting by modeling everything. Now, this is a pretty basic model. I'm using a subdivision approach. And right now, just working on getting the straps and giving them a little bit of thickness and mirroring them from the front to the back. Um, I use a mirror modifier for most of the modeling and UV process, but really just working on those details. From here, I'm moving on to uh, the front strip that's gonna go around the front face and the back face. And then I imported a handbag model that I'd done previously just to grab and reuse some of the zippers just so I don't have to model the zippers all over again. That's um, really important on any project is, of course, trying to be efficient and reusing things that you've already created in the past. Uh, no reason not to. So now I'm creating a little rubber patch that's on the front and the back of the med kit. This is going to have our cross on it, which will be kind of that uh, symbolism to show that this is a first aid kit. And really just refining the zipper here, um, getting close on the actual model itself. One thing I like about working all within Blender is I can jump back and forth between modeling and UVs or UVs and textures. And because I'm not exporting to various other softwares, it's just really nice to be able to go back and forth in between steps. So I might call it done on the modeling soon, but that's not to say, you know, I can't jump back in and make some tweaks later on. So now I'm just modeling a very simple fabric tab and giving it some thickness. Um, to where this little clip can hang on to. And I just made that a separate mesh from the actual uh, main body of the med kit. Of course, everything will be joined up. So what I'm doing at this point is I'm going through and I'm applying either one level or two levels of subdivision everywhere. And then I'm gonna go through everything and just dissolve any edges that aren't contributing to the silhouette of the object or significantly to the object's uh, shading. So that's a common pattern you see me do. I model something in sub D, I apply the subdivision modifiers, then I go through and I dissolve any excess geometry and that, that's just an optimization step. I'm also getting rid of all the back faces on things that I won't see um, just to make sure I'm not uh, wasting any UV space either that I'm getting all of the texture density that I can out of this thing. So really kind of almost done with the modeling and the optimization phase. Um, from here, I'm gonna go into UVs and I might step back and optimize something I missed here and there, but really just making a baseline for my UVs right now. I'm putting in just a color grid texture so I can see what's going on with my UVs. And I'm putting the first couple seams into the mesh right now and I'm just unwrapping those as I go. Once I unwrap a specific segment, I'll go ahead and hide that so I know that it's already been done. And then I could just quickly see what I still have to unwrap. So going through, unwrapping everything, um, nearly done with that. Now make sure to apply the scale before you unwrap everything together. That'll make sure everything has the same texel density. The only area that needed special attention was the actual zipper itself. And you'll see why when we get to the texturing, uh, I unwrap that in a way where it's overlapping and it's all in one vertical line. That's because I know that the texture that I have, the tileable texture for the zipper is gonna be in one straight vertical line. So now just going through and joining all of my objects again. Um, so we're done with modeling. We're done with optimization and we're done with UVs. So now we're going on to material assignments. So I just added all of the materials I anticipate having uh, two variations of canvas, black rubber, rubber, white rubber, the zipper, and then the zipper handle, which is kind of this green plastic. Now just creating my look dev scene. I have two spheres. One is a uh, shadeless sphere that has a middle gray value. The other one has the same middle gray value applied to an actual shader. 
so I could see how the lighting is influencing the scene. I talk more in detail in the full version, but now just starting to play around with some of the textures. I started with Fluent Materializer Fabric, um, but quickly decided I might as well use my own image texture that I have for fabric. You can get that over on offworlddepot.com. And that just gives us some more organic um, chaos for free. That's why I love using image textures is it has a lot of layers built in already. And then from there, just grabbing some more procedural grunge maps to drive some edge masks and fluent um, because I don't want to just have everything be the default kind of fabric texture that I have. I want to add some unique edge variation and cavity variation and just some general uh, grunge around because I don't want this to look like a brand new med pack. I would like this to be a little bit roughed up. And if I did this again, I think I would add more decals to the actual texture as well. Maybe some writing on it or some unique tears, but for now I'm just going in and layering and again in the full video um, you'll be able to, of course it would be really hard to follow every single node that I'm plugging in here, but if you go watch the full training you can see everything and I'll explain my methodology. Um, I'll also explain the mistakes I make and how I kind of change directions here and there. It's really the full process and sometimes it's important to see the mistakes even just as important as it is to see the successful things as well, because mistakes are what teach us. Uh, anyway, I've duplicated that material and created a variation for the second canvas material. And now I'm moving on to the actual zipper. So you can see what I mean by the zipper being in one vertical line. I have to have all the UVs lined up and overlapping a bit so that I could just have them all in one line. Now the texture I'm using has kind of an awkward start and stop point on the zipper, which I don't really want for this particular texture. I just want the zipper to go all the way around. So I open it up in Photoshop and I literally just copied and pasted the middle section to the top and the bottom in all the individual maps. And then I save that and I reload it into Blender, and now I have an infinite zipper that goes around, and I don't have that awkward start and end point periodically. Now moving on to what I think are the last textures, which is the green plastic and now the rubber texture. And that's just a matter of coming up with a little bit of roughness variation and normal variation, just to give a, a bit of visual interest so it's not just one sterile CG surface. Now, um, already well into baking, I'm just using Simple Bake. I took a break and stepped back into texturing because I wanted to add one more kind of ground layer of grunge. So I'm using Fluent Materializer and kind of a, a smart setup where I mix shaders at the end of the shader network, the node network, and then I copy and paste that group to the various other materials, something I go over in greater detail in the actual training, of course. And then I am just baking with all the settings that I set up in Simple Bake, and we have pretty much our final result. I'm saving the procedural version as a backup, just in case I wanna make changes. And then I'm plugging in my baked maps. Uh, 4K resolution was plenty of resolution for this. Now for the final render, I'm setting up a quick scene where I change the background color, but not the lighting, and then I drop down a shadow catcher, and I'm toying around with um, the placement of that zipper was floating. I have a longer camera lens. I add some depth of field. I play around with roughness settings. I add a little bit more normal variation and some sharpness to the compositor and some contrast. And this is our final result. We're pretty much done here. This is, again, just that last step, adding a bit of normal variation. But here is the final result. I hope you enjoyed watching. This was a quick overview for advanced users. If you want to see every single step, the training is over an hour and a half long. It's just me talking. Um, I show you my mistakes. I show you everything. So if that, that sounds interesting, of course, I'd appreciate uh, you supporting me over on my site, offworlddepot.com. If not, thanks for watching it here. Please, of course, uh, leave a like. You know that helps me um, and comment as well. Uh, see ya. Thanks for watching.